welcome to Boom Tequila. I'm Jody, And I'm Erin. And today we are talking about manifestation and the law of attraction. Hell yeah. So what is the law of attraction? Well, it's basically just the idea that what you think about is what you will attract. So if you think positive thoughts, you will attract positive things and vice versa. Manifesting is rooted in the law of attraction, but it takes a more specific twist on really focusing on the specific thing that you want to achieve. The thought is that by setting your intention and focus on a specific goal, you will ultimately attract it. For example, if I want to become a millionaire, I can focus on this and affirm this until I truly believe that I'm on my way, ultimately assuring it will come to fruition. (laughs) So that's kind of the idea. What are some of the ways to start manifesting your goals? And there's a few different things. We're going to kind of talk about what each of these are and break those down a little bit as we go. Things like vision boards, affirmations, prayer. All right. So vision boards. The first time I ever made one or ever heard anything about this was in cosmetology school. Do you remember when they had us do our like the salon that we wanted, like it, like we were supposed to like imagine the salon that we wanted and put it on there, put it on the board and put like where you wanted the bathrooms, the stations and everything. I guess it's kind of a vision board, but kind of not like for me, I kind of considered it one because I always wanted to own my own someday, you know? So yeah, no, I think that concept is there because they had us kind of put all the things of like inspiration. I totally forgot about that. Well, there were, there were a few parts to it. So there was one part of it where you were actually like designing the salon and creating the business and that Mm -hmm. project side of it. But then there was also a vision board side of it where you had, like you were saying this board and you put all of your inspiration for the salon and like colors and brand elements and your vision for it. So no, that's a good example. And I forgot about that. Exactly. I love vision boards though, because I'm, I'm a visual person and it just helps to like see that and focus in on your goals and what you want to achieve and what you want for your future. A hundred percent. No, I totally agree. And that was actually going to be my other question was, have you, have you ever had a vision board? And for me, I was like, you know, I, I'm sure I have when I was young, but I keep thinking that's like on my to-do list of things that I want to do is put a vision board together. And I don't have one currently, but I do love the idea of just putting things that inspire you or statements of affirmation that you want to say, whatever, like related to your goals and things like that on a board and having that visual. I don't really do the board so much, but I do. I usually have notebooks and I keep things in there. That Oh, I do a ton of notebooks. Yeah. And like I'll have goals written on notebooks and like little journaling stuff and mm-hmm. Pinterest. So you kind of do I, it. I kind of count. That's like a digital vision board. Yeah, exactly. In a way. It's not quite yeah. the same. I feel like a real vision board I want to actually do, but yeah. So what are some things if you were to put a vision board together today that you would put on your board? Today I would put our goal is to move south and we were just talking about this earlier to move south and probably three or four years we want some land and so I would put things like that I would put places I want to travel I want to go to some places that I haven't been before I would put I don't know those are like the big things I'd say yeah yeah I mine would probably be so cluttered and this is my (laughs) My problem, because I always have, we've talked about this before, but I always have way too many projects I want to do, things I want to do, things I'm working on. I would put, so Venice is one place that I would love to go sometime. Also, Bali would be some like so cool or somewhere near Indonesia. I just feel like all the pictures I've seen are so pretty. I would put that on there. I would put a bunch of healthy lifestyle type stuff on there. Ooh, that's a good one. I don't know whether it be like healthy eating tips or fruits and vegetables, like just of reminding me to like stay focused on those healthier habits. I would probably put affirmations like statements and mm-hmm. like a bunch of money. No. <laughs> money. <laughs> just put money. Just covered in money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I would have a lot of things. I'd have all the things on my vision board. Yeah. Probably chaotic. I'd start with a couple and then it would make me think of something else and then another one and I'd, we just have to have multiple boards. Maybe if I get mine done. I'll post it, but then I, there you go. I don't know that I really want to share it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then another one is affirmations. So affirmations are statements that basically 
affirm, you know, way to reuse the same word, an idea that you want to manifest. So their statements, the, the idea is that through making these statements, it will further your belief and your focus, ultimately tying back to that law of attraction, you will attract it, you will manifest it, etc. So have you ever used affirmations either in being intentional about a focus on something or writing and reciting? Give me yours. So I have, but I guess I've done a few things. I have done like where I've written down my goals and I'll kind of like, I don't know, every so often revisit, uh, not necessarily revisit my old goals, but like write down goals or things that I want to do. I think that's a form of affirmation. I've also, maybe you'll think this is weird. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't feel like it's that weird anymore, but I've also listened to, they have different, oh, there's all these different apps like Breathe and Calm and um, that do like kind of meditation things and they have different things you can listen to that have different affirmations in them. I have not done a lot of like writing it on a note card or a reminder to yourself, but I definitely do try to choose certain things to focus on and kind of mentally I've done that myself. It probably goes along with my, my notebooks where I've had taken pictures of things that I want or have goals or whatever. So I would say, yeah. Yeah. You know what I think of now when I am saying affirmations and when I put the notes for this together, it was before, I think it was before, at least before I saw this come out, but it's all over TikTok. It's, there's this song by, oh my gosh, I'm going to screw a name up. Lil Baby Tate or Young Baby Tate. And it's like, I am healthy. I am wealthy. I'm a queen. I'm a dream. (laughs) Anyways. It's important to be good to yourself and to talk good to yourself and to say, you know what I mean? People need to do that more often. I think it can really make a difference and your attitude and your mood and how you feel. Yeah, absolutely. So I mentally say things and I write them down, but I don't like speak them out loud to myself. I don't know, because then I feel like I'm a bad bitch. I wake up every morning. I look straight (laughs) in the mirror. I'm like, you're a bad bitch. I'm going to crush this day. (laughs) Crush it. (laughs) Now I'm going to still not do that, but that's all right. (laughs) Okay, if you had to write down some affirmations now, what would you write down or what would you want to focus on? I would say like goal wise or like attitude wise or what do you? So a couple of mine and I'm kind of spacing. I feel like I have better ones, but (laughs) one is, you're going to laugh at me for this one, but is I will be a millionaire. And another one is. I can't wait till you're a millionaire. I know, right? Because then I'm going to feel like I'm, gonna, I'm a millionaire too. You can be a millionaire too, girl. Uh, you just got to be my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh man, now I spaced it again. I swear I don't do drugs, guys. I'm just really spacey. <laughs> oh, another one is that I don't need validation from people on the internet. Yeah. Cause that's what that's I struggle really with comparing one. myself or, you know, being like, oh, maybe I should delete that. It didn't get a lot of likes or whatever. And I'm, that's one of mine. I'm not quite do. there yet, but I'm saying the affirmations and I'm leaving stuff up and trying not to, it's almost like not fake it till you yeah. make it, but trying to identify what are those things that I do that are rooted in. And people can make themselves look like anything on the internet. Like you can make yourself look like you're already a millionaire or whatever. And yeah, so, but it's still hard to not compare yourself in your life with people like that. But yeah, one of mine, and I like this one, it says, I forgive everyone that has ever hurt me. I am free of them. I like that one because especially people that you never get an apology from, you know, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, you'll Mm -hmm. never get one. Even if you don't talk to them anymore and it still bothers you, like, just don't let it bother you. And I know sometimes that's easier said than done, but. Mm -hmm. What about people that you still see regularly that you're still, I don't know, like if it's in your family and stuff, I think that's when it's harder. When it's someone that's not in your life anymore, I feel like it's easier to let go and. But I feel like if it's someone that is in my life regularly, I, it'll bother me so much that I'll have to have like a conversation. I'll have to have some like to clear the air, you know? Yeah, no, that's a good point. But if it's someone that like has just done me dirty and they're not in my life, like why let that have any effect on me at all? You know? Yeah, no, for sure. (laughs) It should be easier than it is. I agree. 
All right. And then the last one is uh, prayer. And this one is one that I don't know if it's controversial or not. Uh, maybe this question will be, is this a form of manifesting? Like, do you feel like prayer is a form of yeah. manifesting? Absolutely. So this is one that I kind of feel like it is, but I think some people might argue that it's not. And I think the big difference here is that obviously in one, you're kind of in true manifestation or affirmation, you're potentially putting the power within yourself versus in prayer, you're giving it to God. And so I think you could argue that there's maybe a differentiation there. Although I always find this interesting. There's this... I'm going to get religious on you for a second. <laughs> There's this verse in the Bible. It's Mark 24, 11, And it says something along the lines of, if you pray and believe in your heart that it is true, it will be true. And to me, that is really kind of the same concept of these affirmations or the concept that if you believe that it is true and you have faith that it is true and it will be, that it will be. I think there's a lot of overlap. I think we could argue differences, but I do think there's some similarities as well. Absolutely. All right. Okay. So thinking about things that we manifested in the past and thinking of one of the earliest memories I have of manifesting. Now I had never heard the word manifesting. I didn't know what that was, but there was this thing that we used to do when we were kids. And when I was growing up, there was a church behind the neighborhood that I lived in and Behind the church, there was this small shed type building that we called the the secret place. (laughs) That sounds so creepy now. And there was kind of this little sidewalk type area by it that had stones in the concrete. And one of them was this bright blue. It looked like a gemstone. And we would take turns rubbing the stone and making a wish. (laughs) And I thought of this when I was putting... I don't know, thinking about just this concept and everything. And so my sister and I would wish on it. And I remember one time her going up and she rubbed the stone and she was like, I wish for a cabbage patch doll or a a baby doll or I don't know, something. And I went up to it and I was like, I wish for a million dollars. And she was like, (laughs) it's supposed to be something realistic, Erin. And I was (laughs) like, um okay, but don't be mad when we're older and I have a million dollars and you have an old baby doll that you don't even want anymore. (laughs) And every single time we went to this stupid secret place and wished, I was like, I'm going to have a million (laughs) dollars. And that was my wish every time. Like it never changed. And I think she did end up getting the baby doll and I'm still confident I'm going to have the million (laughs) dollars. I'm I'm feeling that too. I think it's going to happen any day now. I'm ready for it. She probably doesn't remember that. Do you have any stories like that or anything that when you were a kid, either you wished for, or you feel like you've thought about so much that you ended up getting it or wanted it so bad that you got it? Yeah. The first one, I was like 13 and I had the biggest crush on Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. I loved him so much and I went to his concert and it was kind of quiet at one point and I screamed, I love you, Nick. And he said, I love you too. And he kind of looked to the area that I was. Oh, <laughs> and I'll never forget that. That's <laughs> beautiful. That's my first one. Yeah. So we're still, um, he doesn't know it yet, but we still have a special relationship. Oh my gosh. So you basically dated Nick Carter is what you're saying. <laughs> This is amazing. Basically, you guys, it worked. I made it happen. It worked. I made it happen. Dude, my walls were completely covered. and I, But <laughs> they were no. covered. And I loved me some Nick Carter. Same thing with my, not my first boyfriend with the blonde bowl cut. But the one after him, I had the biggest crush on him for like years. And I I love how mine are like about boys. Yours is like a million dollars. And I'm like, oh, Nick Carter and this boy. Like, <laughs> No, that's I, okay. I I might have money, but I like never have a boyfriend. So it's <laughs> like, that's why you have money. It no. works, I guess. <laughs> yes. No, I loved him. I have because you know how I have all these like old home videos and stuff. I have old videos of me talking about him, about how like I'm gonna date him and he's so hot and blah blah blah. And then we dated for a long time and in high school years. A long that's time, awesome. Whatever. I love that. Which. Um, <sighs> Heads nicely into my next example. 
Oh. And this one is kind of about um, something that you tried to manifest too. And this one was not like a first memory, but it was when I was a little older. And by a little older, I mean eighth grade. So I read this article in Seventeen Magazine. I'm pretty sure was the one because that my sister got it and I wasn't supposed to read it because it had inappropriate things like kissing advice in it. (laughs) And (laughs) I know. (laughs) No. Um, anyways, I, uh, I remember this article that I was reading in the magazine and it said it was a guaranteed spell to get your crush to like notice you or fall in love with you or something. And I was like, oh, perfect. I got this. (laughs) And so what you had to do is write the name of your crush on a piece of paper and then you had to like find these other things, like something that reminded you of your crush and uh, maybe something you like about, I don't know. There was like this list of things you had to get and you had to put it in a box and decorate the box with like hearts and your crush's name. And then <laughs> your face is like, and then put the box in the closet. And I did all of this. I did all the steps. I did them right. Um, it did not work. My he never, <laughs> your crush never oh, noticed it me. We never dated. Um, that's fine. <laughs> Oh man, where's he at now? I honestly, I don't know. I don't, yeah, probably I'm friends with him on Facebook or something. Maybe I don't even oh, know man. if I am. I think he's married though, happily married. Um, you know, don't like, most of, the, your, like most of the men my age. <laughs> don't let the love of your life's wife come between you and him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst advice. What another he's thing not that the I love just... of my life, my eighth grade crush. <laughs> That I never even got to know because he pretty much just slept all the time in class. Really? So I don't think oh, I ever man. really talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting worse. Anyways, did you ever do anything like that when it comes to like wishing or any oh, any gosh. weird spells from you? Did you do any <laughs> magazines to try to? Wow. I don't think that's really tied. As I'm saying this, I don't know how much that's tied to manifesting. I think the concept around (laughs) it was that ultimately through doing these steps, you're going to like manifest it. Yeah. In my mind, I was like, oh, like I'm a witch and this is going to (laughs) work. You know, I probably did, honestly, knowing me, but I can't, I can't think of any. So I'm not going to say no. I'm going to say, yeah, I just can't think of it because I'm, I'm sounds like something I would totally do. Maybe you should do it now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah Not your crush <laughs> put your husband's name on a box and decorate it and just let him find it <laughs> no like, I'm coming I'm coming after remember I'm coming after Cameron Marlowe <laughs> that's yeah you could do don't that don't let your husband come between you and the love of your life <laughs> never let your husband <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow <laughs> Paula for more tips <laughs> Oh man, that is awesome! And now it's time for Joe Jam. Woo! <laughs> I it wasn't a helpful addition. I like that. I like it. So, if I don't know if you've heard, but you're about to. My song this week is Nicholas Jonas. He, he's coming out with an album again, all by himself. Nick Jonas, and the song is called Spaceman. Have you heard it? It came out today. No. <laughs> But it's I will. So good. It's so good. He's so beautiful. <laughs> Priyanka, who? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, just don't let your husband or his wife come between. <laughs> don't let the love of your life's wife come between you and the love of your life. <laughs> right. <laughs> Y'all could just do like an open thing. Um. So my, <laughs> sorry. I like it. So mine is, I'm like really mixing it up this week because it's almost oh. always like a hip hop and R&B song, uh, Tiger Lily, and it's called Somebody Does. So these are two girls and they're, it's country. This song, they were promoting it on social media, TikTok and Instagram and stuff, and people really loved it. And so they asked people to pre-order the song so that they could get it pushed out and so many people supported them and pre-ordered the song to help give them a boost that it actually debuted. I want to say it hit number one in their genre, which is country. And 
I don't know. They're just like really cute and sweet girls and it's a fun song. So that's my song. I listen to it. And now it's time to dish bish. You better dish bish. <laughs> All right. Mm. So for dish bish today, we're mixing it up a little bit. Basically, I have this game. It's called Truth or Drink. And we're going to give it a go. <laughs> I'm going to pull some right. cards basically. And then we're going to answer them. Except... You can drink if you want to, but you, it's like the not answering them and drinking as an alternative isn't an option. So I'll do both. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll answer and drink. Is All that right. an option? Yeah. It's on this one. It's not true. The drink it's truth and drink. Option. Oh, and okay. And drink. Okay. If you want to, you can drink. <laughs> okay. Aside from moist, what word can't you stand the sound of? Can't sound of. Um. I kind of, you know, what's weird is I kind of like the word moist. It makes me think of cake and I like cake. Yeah. I don't hate the word moist. I think a lot of people, (laughs) moist and ointment are two words that a lot of people hate. The word moist has never bothered me. I just said it a bunch of times and, but there are some words that bother me a lot more than the word moist. Moist. Really? That's so creepy. Yeah. um, Mushy and gushy. Both of those. Disgusting. I hate the word schlong. (laughs) <laughs> i like that <laughs> i don't know it's, oh, yeah. i don't like the word curd like curdled i don't like that a lot of them i know a lot of people don't like the word bulbous and i like bulbous oh i don't mind bulbous yeah i don't like the word chunky yeah when i see like something in the supermarket and it's like chunky soup i just think like <laughs> That <laughs> why no. is that a selling point? Like this one's chunkier, gross. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like the word. I don't really like smear. Ew, smear. Smear. What about pussy? <laughs> I only like the word pussy in a rap song. Like I can. I know. I like it's a word I would never say in conversation. But yeah. put on a rap song that has like the most raunchy stuff in it, and I'm just amazed at what I can. What I what can come out of my mouth? <laughs> I'll know so all crazy. the crazy. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then you like talk and you're like, oh my gosh, I never never say that. <laughs> all right, what's something you've done to try and be cool? Spend a good forty five minutes on each picture that I post on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that really bad. I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. Now. Oh man, I don't want to say this is more recent. It's embar- um, I guess I would say maybe like I tried some of the trendy TikTok dances over the summer. <laughs> You're so good at them. The one that you did with the hood and it came down. As soon as I saw that, I was like, Aaron could do that for sure. <laughs> and then you did it. I'm like, yes. Mine wasn't as graceful, but I did it. It was better. Yours is the best. Oh, this is a maybe fun one. I don't know. (laughs) It says, describe the first time we met and what was your honest first impression of me? I'm sure the first time we met was probably the first day of Cosmo school. Uh, Yeah. Um, I don't remember my first impression. I'm sure I thought that you were fun. I know. I was just thinking that too. And that's like the worst, answer. but we're not in like a relationship. So it doesn't yeah. matter if we like get this answer yeah. wrong. Um, I was like, I don't really remember the first time we met or like yeah. what I thought of you. I remember being friends with you <laughs> pretty quickly. And yeah. then like, I, I feel like I don't we remember like, like having we... this moment when we first met. <laughs> no, I just remember. I remember when we first started like talking and stuff, we clicked pretty fast. I don't ever remember thinking like, oh, she's a bitch or anything like that. Like I remember always liking you and thinking you were fun. I remember when we were doing the curling iron and drop it like it's hot came on. I remember that. That's a special moment. I remember thinking that you seemed really cool and that I thought you were really funny and I liked hanging around you. But okay, if I didn't have my current (laughs) job, what do you see me doing? Oh my gosh. I feel like you would be so good at anything that you do like literally anything that you do you you take it seriously and like do the best that you can it's your enneagram three (laughs) (laughs) but if you weren't doing what you do now I don't know I I would say something probably not just doing hair but something in like the beauty industry again something higher up than just a hairstylist I could see that. Yeah. 
like head of something like, you know what you would be so good at the hair shows that we used to go to and how they would put, there was that, that lady that like put together the websites and put together the show. Mary Rector Gable, stuff. she's my freaking idol. Is that who you're talking about? That's exactly what mm. you, you would be so good her. at that. That's the one, whatever. I don't even know what that would be called, but that. I would be good at being the founder of Behind the Chair. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I would take that. For you, I just thought of this, but okay, so I could see you either, you're going to think this is weird, but I really could see it either being an actress or like an influencer. I could also oh. see you doing something like hosting a talk show or I or I could that. see you owning a bar. I could see you doing all yes. that. <laughs> like in Nashville and oh, like absolutely. you know everyone and I could see that too. Yeah, I like that. Thanks. Okay. What is the weirdest way you've ever earned money and how much did you get? Oh man. The weirdest way I've ever earned money. One time me and Ashley, who Ashley, that was a guest on here a few episodes ago, we, a friend of ours like hired us to clean his apartment. I guess this isn't weird, but we, we cleaned his apartment for him before he moved into it. And then on the check, he wrote a uh, pipe cleaning on it. Like as a funny, like, haha, like pipe cleaning, you know? And I thought that was funny. Um, do you remember when I worked at that salon at the tanning booth and you came up and we did like a $5 haircut day and I've, we just like made a ton of money that whole morning. And I've dreamed of doing that again in. ever since. I mean, I would up it to like at least $10 now, Yeah. but we were what? 18 years old. We were kind mm-hmm. of broke and we decided to go into her salon and do, we put, we put it out on my space probably yeah. and put a sign up on the front that said walk-ins welcome. And I think we did $5 haircuts and yeah. we didn't style them or anything. It was just like $5 haircuts. And we had so many people. We each left with like shopping spree money. We're like, let's, we don't have any money, yeah. but we want to go shopping. So we did that. I don't remember how much it was. And everybody tips too. Like a lot of times they just give us like 10 bucks mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. And when so, you're dressed in a haircut yeah, it was, and you're not styling or anything, it's so quick. And it was like packed. Like we had people waiting. Yeah. It was, it was literally just a day so that we could go shopping that whole like evening. And yeah. we did. And it was a blast. <laughs> and then we we're just like, sweet. We got shopping spree money. And then we went and blew it at the mall, but yes. that's to be young and Oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I can't think of anything weird, but those are like the kind of funny, funny and like fun ones that I can think of. Yeah, those know. are good. I definitely I... want to pursue feet pics eventually. Yeah. I need a pedicure hopefully first. you'll be able to say that one soon. Yeah. What if you like put your heart into it <laughs> and like <laughs> all this work they don't want my heart, they want my feet. <laughs> and then you end up like, nobody wants to buy them. Will you be upset or is it, will that be okay? I think, I think I'll survive. It'll be all right. So. Yeah. All right. I think mine, I always think of like selling Kirby vacuums as like the weirdest thing I did. I sold Kirby yeah. vacuums door to door and it's weird. I don't recommend it. Um, I, how much money did you make? Uh, not very much at all. It's the worst <laughs> job ever. Yeah. I feel like I did do, I sold silly putty on the bus when I was in middle school <laughs> to people in like Easter eggs. That was weird. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's I weird. Mean- <laughs> like homemade silly putty homemade yeah wow <laughs> like I homemade like I did like the blue, glue and borax and like put it into easter eggs and sold it for like 50 cents on the bus nice yeah that's real exciting it's weird I wasn't allowed to have like a giga pet or anything so what else were they gonna do <laughs> really you, you weren't allowed to I finally got one literally and then the next day they banned them from school my gosh. So I believe it or not, and I swear I'm not like a super hoarder, but I still have my they're probably broken and don't work anymore, but I still have I have like a little bag of all my little pets that are probably Oh my gosh, you had more than one. You're like a baller. very dead. You're a gigapet yeah. baller. <laughs> yeah. I just had one and it was a koala. But none of them Aww. actually looked like animals. They were little black pixel dots. I can't like enjoy things normally. I have to get obsessed when I like, then have to have like a thousand of everything. Have you ever dated a friend's ex? Oh, yeah. I was like that in size, I guess. <laughs> stupid, stupid. One time I was in high school and 
she acted like she hated him and she was over him and blah, blah, blah. blah. And this is the same dude that I cheated on and I got um, poison ivy on me and stuff. You know, you've listened, you've heard the story. Karma, baby. And that's what I, <laughs> yeah. And he, I remember she was like, you know, I'm over him, no big deal. I don't care. And then I was like, well, I kind of like him and he wants to date me. So we started dating and she blew up. Like, I remember us having a huge fight at my parents' camper. And some people were on my side and most people were on her side because girl code, you know. But I've never, I haven't done it since yeah (laughs) have you well I never told you this but no I'm just kidding (laughs) I'm totally kidding no I did have a friend that like I don't I wouldn't even say this was dating like hung out once with and it was like low-key and kind of awkward so I don't know if that counts as like a date or like dated. I wouldn't say dated, but like maybe you could call it a date. We hung out once. Yeah. Um, I don't know. (laughs) This is a fun one to end on. Have you ever had a pregnancy scare? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'm really letting it all loose here. So when I was in high school, they didn't really have, you couldn't go to Walmart and get plan B. Okay. So you had to go to the health department. And you had, they didn't ask questions. They didn't tell your parents or anything like that. But you go to the health department and they give you one pill and then you have to take it 12 hours later. And like, I wasn't the only one that had to do this. Like a lot of girls did this, but I just really, I wanted, you know, I really wanted to be safe. I wasn't trying to have babies in school. So I don't know. I I can't think of any like scares because every time I would think like there's a possibility I'd go to the health department and get the plan B. I feel you, girl. (laughs) Um, Same. (laughs) But not in, I mean, not in high school, but that's just because I, I stopped, I dropped out of high school so young. Um, That's what I tell people. Isn't that weird? That's weird. Yeah. That's weird that I say that. Um, Whatever. (laughs) You tell people you dropped out of high school? Yeah why (laughs) because I'm always like because I I don't know because I I quit going to high school when I was like 15 because I well I started at Purdue when I was 15 and so then I never like like I never graduated with my class or anything like that and so they're like what happened you like I just because I don't want to explain it be like oh well I I started college really early I don't know (laughs) so I guess which really, I guess it'd be better to just say that, but I'm very awkward and weird person. So instead I just tell people I dropped out of school <laughs> and I say it as a I joke. Cause like in my head, I'm like, oh, they get it. Cause like, I know it's not yeah. true, except I'm pretty sure most of them don't get it. And people just are like, oh, I'm, hmm. oh, wow. okay. I'm sorry. Well, you're doing great now. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm like, oh, I never took the SATs or something. I'm like, why? I'm like, I dropped out of school like in my head it's it's funny yeah um yeah I took plan b at least twice I I don't know I can't remember if it's more than that but I know at least twice and so I would say I would call that a pregnancy scare less like a but like you said just in case like it's a pregnancy scare enough that you're taking plan b so I would say exactly I don't think I had any other than that yeah and I you could go to Walmart I remember but it was really embarrassing because you had to go to the pharmacy really I didn't know that see I I thought that you just had to go to the health department and see I don't think I knew about all that I went to I went to Christian school and we didn't we didn't learn <laughs> nothing about no sex so <laughs> well. yeah really good one to end on but that's all we have so I don't know I'm talking that way yeah if you stayed this long give us a good review it helps follow us on Instagram at boom tequila podcast and we will catch you next time Bye. Peace out. Bye. Bitches. I ain't got no balls.